ABG or VBG? That's the age-old debate in emergency medicine. But today, we're not just choosing sides. We're breaking it down simple, fast, and practical, so you know exactly when a VBG is good enough. And when you absolutely need an ABG, why even use a VBG? It's easier to draw, way less painful, and safer. No arterial stick, no risk of thrombosis. But does it give you the info you need? Let's see what VBG is really good for. First up, pH. The pH of a VBG is usually within 0.03 of an ABG. That's solid. So for things like DKA or COPD, VBG pH is totally fine. But if your patient is hypotensive, in arrest, or has a complex acid base mass, oh, that's your red flag, go ABG. Now let's talk CO2. This one's tricky. The VBG PCO2 is only reliable to rule out hypercapnia. If it's less than 45, hypercapnia is ruled out. You're safe. But if it's over 45, you can't trust it. Grab an ABG and check the real story. Bicarbonate? It's usually close enough, within 1.0 to 1.4 millimoles per liter of the ABG. But heads up, COPD patients can throw it off completely. Their VBG bicarb might be way off. Don't trust it blindly. Lactate levels. If the VBG lactate is under two, you're probably fine. But if it's trauma, sepsis, or any kind of shock, VBG lactate can mislead you. Go ABG to track it properly. So what's the bottom line? Use VBG for pH, bicarb, and to rule out CO2 retention when your patient is stable. But when things get serious, shock, arrest, unclear acid base status. Go ABG. Don't gamble on correlation when it really counts. Hope that helps clear the air on the VBG versus ABG debate. If you found this useful, hit like, share with your ED team, and subscribe for more emergency medicine mastery. Until next time, scan smart, think fast, and stay sharp.